Nathan, check this out. Blue skies, blue car, mountain. That can only mean one thing. We're at Detroit. No, no, we're in Silverthorne, Colorado, which means? Means that we're going to test this brand new 2014 Toyota Corolla. And we're going to take it up the Ike Gauntlet, coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Let's face it, the old Corolla was a giant, well, yeah, yawn. The new one, it's much nicer. Standard LED lights, they've revised the front, they've revised the back. It's youthful, it's stylish, it's, dare I say, sexy. And that's because Akio Toyota, the chairman of the board, set new rules about Toyota design and said, make it more lively, make it more interested, make it more, well, Nathan would say, make it look more like the Avalon. And I think they've done that. Oh, you caught me mounting one of our GoPros. While we're back here, let's check out the back of the Corolla. Check out these sexy taillights. And Nathan, look at this sexy S. S, oh, sexy. Get it? Sway. <laughs> By the way, we always get the most expensive cars. They give journalists the best prime examples, and that's why this car costs $23,000. I know that's a lot. You can get them cheaper, but our test cars are always going to be loaded. All right, my man. Here we go. I gauntlet in the new Corolla. Go for it, dude. Solo DL is... Zero it out. Okay, you ready to go? Folks. Ready? Here we go. Yep. Now the Versa, the CVT, took about I think like 24 seconds to get the 60. And as a youthful car, this is going to be much faster, Nathan. Yeah. Well, it should be. It's got a lot more power, and I don't think it's that much heavier than the Versa. Uh, it's not going to be that much CVT? faster. That's no. 55. Here comes. Right there. All right. Let me. That's a couple. Yeah. That's not no, bad. No. 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 It's not too bad. We'll show them when we get to the top. It's close, okay. All right, we'll show them when we get to the top. What do you think? Put it in the comments because uh, we're having a little fun with this thing. I will let you know a hint. It is faster than the Versa was. Just a little bit. If you look real carefully, you'll find pretty much nothing different about the engine. It's a 1.8 liter that puts out 132 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. So it's very similar to the one that it, well, doesn't even replace. The thing is, this particular power plant is hooked up to a CVT, a continuously variable transmission, which we normally don't like, but in this particular case, actually works pretty good. Better yet, there is a six-speed manual transmission option. Thank you, God. All right, Nathan, how is this drive? Actually pretty good. Yeah? Highway drive, well, this has the larger wheel tire package. It's the sport, right? So there, you can hear a little bit of, you know, tire noise, but it's not too bad. The overall ride, I think, is pretty damn comfortable. You doing okay, Mr. Kyle? Kyle's in the back, the camera guy. Once again, our cameraman is ballast for this run. That's right, we made sure you had a full meal before we left. And how about the steering, how's that feel? The steering is completely synthetic, but it's not a bad thing because in a car like this, you're not gonna get a lot of steering feel anyway, so what they did was they gave it a little extra weight, and I like that. It's actually easier to maneuver this car than some of the other cars in this class. Now, you do have a sport mode in the CVT transmission, so you could put it in sport mode, but you know, some of our viewers suggested that we use cruise control, so give it a shot, man. Set you it at it. 60, which is the speed limit, and let's see how it does holding 60 going up the eye gauntlet. Now, by the way, I tried this in the Versa, and it popped out a few times. Part of the thing that happens is once you start putting a lot of strain on the engine, it'll re actually release the uh, cruise control. But in this case, I'm pretty sure we'll have no problem. We should be able to maintain it. Oh my, you can feel that rubber band effect from the CVT. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing the engine going, rawr, rawr. it's actually not so horrible for a CVT because you're not hearing the transmission. All you're hearing is the engine droning on and on and on. That's the look of, uh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> no, I, do you hear any lash? I don't hear any lash. Uh, let's be quiet. All right. Let's see when it gets a little steeper. Now, by the way, I think it's important to mention this. Uh, the Ike Gauntlet is from Silverthorne, Colorado to the top of the Eisenhower Tunnel, which is about 10,000 to 12,000 feet of elevation, give or take. And really what we're doing is we're stressing the car because there's a lot less air density up here. In fact, 30% less, which means 30% less horsepower. That's right, folks. It's much more difficult for a vehicle to achieve top power up here. Even a turbocharged or supercharged vehicle loses horsepower. Oh 
my god, that could be a Formula One car. Check this out. Nathan is completely wrong. The speedometer goes all the way to 150 miles an hour. How youthful is that? Check this out. Watch. Wait, 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 Kyle, come back here. Watch this. Move the camera over here. Let me actually let me borrow it. Check this out, guys. I started up. Look what the speedometer does. Look at that. All the way to 150 miles an hour. That is crazy fast. Now Nathan, you had the opportunity to test this in San Diego, I believe, when it yeah. first was introduced at the media event. So you've had some time with it. I haven't had that much time with it. And, you know, I'm joking, obviously, when I say it's, it's crazy youthful. But I think that calling it uh, a baby Camry might be just a little harsh. It's not an insult. The Camry is one of the best-selling cars in the nation for a very good reason, because it's a solid car, and people know a solid value in a solid car when they see one. I'm saying this is the smaller version of that. See, the old Corolla wasn't. The old Corolla was just like a rattle box, you know, compared to this one. This one's much nicer, it's classier, and it works its way up to the point of saying, hey, you know what, it's almost as good as this larger vehicle, the Camry. And it lives in a very competitive space, right? We're very. Not, talking about competition, we're talking about probably one of the most sought-after segments, because the manufacturers know that if they get you at this segment, chances are when you're ready to have kids and need a bigger vehicle, you'll move up to their crossover, you'll move up to the Camry, whatever it is. In terms of competition, let's just go through them, right? Sure, sure. Ford, Focus. Oh, absolutely. The Honda Accord. No, no, no. Civic. Civic. See? I thought it was a bigger car. <laughs> Honda Civic. Uh, the Elantra. Oh, yeah. The Hyundai, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, what are we missing here? There's like a ton of them we're missing. Yeah, the Kia Forte. Kia Forte. Chevy Cruze. Chevy Cruze. That's a very popular one. Yeah, so you know, it's that kind of small size car, which has now become, even in the Versa, which is a segment below this one, much bigger. These cars, this could have been a Camry from 1990. Yeah, it actually could be. The interior space in here is very nice, and frankly, you can put real people in the back seat. The old Corolla was fairly comfortable, but nowhere near as well laid out as this one is. Yeah, I, I do like how comfortable it is. They have certainly made it much more modern, much more refined. Uh, and there's a greater sense of value in this than I think you had in the old one. I, you know, you called it a rattle box. I don't think it's a rattle box, but I do think it was certainly uh, on the cheaper side. The materials here are very nice. There's this kind of fake leather stitching, which looks classy even though it isn't real. I love this new interior. It's so much better than the old Corolla. This is a place you don't mind spending time. The seats are really comfortable. The overall dash layout is fantastic. Even the door panels look kind of cool, especially with this package. The Sport, you get the raised white stitching. Looks great. Not that only does it look great, Nathan, but move your head. But check this out. There's a button here that says Sport, and there's a button here that says Apps. How youthful is that? That is so youthful, yeah. The Sport button doesn't really do much. Same performance. I think it firms up the steering a little bit. And the Apps thing, well, yeah, you can put apps into the system, which most cars do now. Hey, can I play with like, uh, I don't know, killer penguins? <sighs> no. Isn't that called killer penguins? Yeah, it's not going to work. Killer birds? In, no, it's not going to do that not either. Birds. Angry birds is what you're trying to say. Jeez. Angry birds, see, I'm all over it, man. That's hip. Well, did you see in black and white when you were a kid? Well, there's a lot more room back here. There's even enough headroom for me to get my big hairy head in, Nathan. And there's enough leg room where Nathan usually drives for me to fit comfortably. And Nathan, how youthful is this? You have a child seat back here. Well, who's, the, who's the old man? Who's the old man with a child seat? Who's the old man with a teenager? <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Every place I touch is soft. How's your elbow? Not so good, but okay. I, I mentioned that before when we tested this in San Diego. And it's the one thing Toyota needs to work on. Some other guys are doing it, having good materials on the door panel. You have a little tiny spot where there's a little bit of uh, leather or leatherette right here at the elbow rest, but not up here. So that's something I always complain about. You've got a really nice steering wheel there. It's a nice steering wheel. It's leather wrapped and it is nice good and thick. I, li I like thick. I like being able to wrap my paws around it really feel it. Granted, I mean, it really works with a sports car or a sporty car. Scion TC is a good example. But in this case, it does help make this feel a little bit more sporty. All right, now how about uh, economy? What are we doing here? Can you get instantaneous, which is going to be awful, of course, because we're flying up this at yeah, 60 miles an hour up a 7% grade. Uh, I gotta figure out what you're talking about. Because that's what CVTs are really about, right? They, they give you, on average, a few more MPG per mile per gallon, sorry. Um, and that's why manufacturers use them, because with fuel prices going up, this is an easy way to get better fuel economy. Okay, well, it's saying average right now is 33.4, but that's here we go. I just reset it just yeah. to make sure. 
So 33.4 getting up here, which is actually really good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, this isn't a vehicle that can get 40 miles per gallon on the highway. If you want that, you have to get the eco version of this car, which has a different engine. Yeah, somehow 40 has become the magic number that all the manufacturers are striving to hit. you got to have 40. And um, most of them have to have some kind of a special eco model, right? Ford yeah. has the eco focus where there's like uh, special aero aids, low rolling resistance tires, all this stuff to get you there. It's really hard to do it in a car that's got the bigger, fatter tires uh, and the sport package. It's funny because there are a few cars out there that can do it without any additions whatsoever. So I'm not going to mention any names, but I can say this. In terms of this car, if you're getting, let's say, 36 miles per gallon average and you wanted to get up to nearly 40, well, the amount of money and the amount of change you have to make from this car to that car, the Eco, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, it's only a couple bucks a year that you're going to save, yeah. a couple hundred bucks. You know, especially if you lose weight, right? you could do it pretty cheaply by losing 50 pounds each. That's As people like to point out, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If we were lighter, and but that's the whole thing with the car. If you take some crap out of the back of the trunk of the car, you'll actually get better mileage. This vehicle weighs just under 3,000 pounds, so with the three of us in here, we're in the mid 3,000 pound range now. Yeah, guys, we tried a little cheap trick to interject a little bit of fun into this car, which was showing you a bunch of punk-ass skaters. But you know what? It's not going to help because this is a baby Camry. That's what it really is. And you know what? You can't take a Camry and make it cool. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's wonderful. It's easy, but it's not cool. Oh, wait, wait. The wheels, dude, they are crazy youthful. Yeah, they blow my skirt up. Look wow. at, I mean, they even have mud around them. How youthful is that? Because you know youth and mud, it's just cool. Sorry, Gramps. No. <laughs> All right, let's no, go. It's fine. It's not cool. Now, uh, we're almost at the top of the eye gauntlet. Uh, one of our front cameras has now shot the sky, so <laughs> we're getting some interesting oh, yeah, video yeah. Out, of, out of that. <laughs> but the cruise control held. The winding was there, but not as noticeable as in the Versa. Note, and uh, the car did okay. It did just fine. I mean, I don't like CVTs. If you like driving, usually you don't like those. But right, yeah, they take the joy out of it. They, they do, but they this is a solid out. one. This is a good CVT for what it is. And a CVT is a cone where a big band runs up and down, and so continuously variable transmission, which means you can have infinite amount of gears. But basically, what it means is that when you floor it, you get this drone and you get this rubber band effect. Yeah, and by the way. For those of you who say there are no paddle shifters in CVTs, yeah, there's one here. You can play with the paddle shifters. And what it'll do is it'll hold an RPM. It's not holding the gear, it's holding an RPM. Yeah, sure. Now we're going downhill a little bit. Why don't, sure. you, put in sport, why don't you put it in sport mode and show sport how, mode. Yeah, how to hold Slap it. that puppy over. By the way, I like the gear lever. So you got manual fifth there right now. Yep, and I'm going 3,000 RPM, and it's holding 3,000 RPM. And then I drop it down the fourth, and now it's up to about 3,500 RPM. It's not a gear, okay? What, but you can use it when you're going around corners. That's about the only thing... I think you could do with these paddle shifters with a fake, you know, system. It's it's otherwise it's just like video game fun. Ugh. The last time I tested one of these, I wasn't able to do this because they had a spare tire in the back, an extra one. There is a lot of space, including for my spare tire. In fact, you can get two Nathans back here if you really wanted to. And if you fold those seats down, maybe four. <sighs> for crying out loud. You know what though? I will give Toyota a lot of credit because it once again feels like a little Camry. Oh, by the way, our average was about 16.4, and it's just jumped up to 18.9. Yeah, yeah, going uh, uphill is certainly not the most fuel-efficient way of running a car, no matter what the transmission choice. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're in the Johnson Tunnel, baby. <laughs> I can't help but point that out. What were they we're thinking, man? <laughs> we're in the, the, the presidential names. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Johnson. Yeah, we're about to pop out of it. And as soon as we get out of this tunnel, I'll uh, show you guys what... You know what? I'll show you right now. Here. There it is. Read it and weep. Remember, guys, that is not a zero to 60 at level playing field. That is going up a hill at high altitude, which is, frankly, slightly faster than what we got in the Versa. 22.5. Yeah, about two seconds faster than the Versa. Um, so um, it is still excruciatingly slow. But once again, 10,000 feet of elevation going up a hill. With a CBT. With a CBT and with uh, a lot of... Wow, that camera's pointing straight up now. Kyle, we are going to get some awesome... Awesome video of yeah, the tunnel, did. dude. <laughs> it's, and it's still recording. I can see it's, it's flashing. It's still going. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're, we're squirting out of the Johnson Tunnel. <laughs> no, you're the one doing it, dude. You brought it up. 
<laughs> All right, uh, foul. You have to edit that out. Please. No, come on. That is not. Oh yeah, no, that fine. is not cool. It's fine. No, no, no. That is. That is just. Not, we're a family show now. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, Nathan. I think I know the answer to this, but on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, what do you give it? The only reason I'm going to give it a lease it is because of one thing: the Mazda three. For the same price, you can get a Mazda three, which is a lot more entertaining to drive. But this is a damn good little car. And when I say lease it, I mean it in the most respectable way because Camrys are good cars, right? They're not exciting, but they're good cars. And this is a baby Camry. You know, I'm tempted to give it a buy it, but a CVT, I can't give a CVT a buy it. No way, no how. So I'm gonna give it a lease it until we have a chance to maybe drive the stick shift. Six speed, baby. As always, this is Roman and, and Nathan saying thanks for watching. See you next time. And don't forget to subscribe for a new video every day. Ciao.